My name is James Batley, and in 1999, my role in East Timor started off as the Australian Consul. I received a phone call from Canberra saying, the government needs you uh, to uh, set up the uh, Australian Consulate in uh, East Timor. And you've got a week to, to uh, leave Solomon Islands and to come to Canberra and then go up to, uh, to Timor. Um, so this was at a time of intense um, activity on the part of the Australian government. Well, it was a, a pretty uh, intense and sensitive time, I suppose you'd describe it. Australia hadn't had an office there at all in the past. So the first challenge was um, going in and finding where we might set up our office. There was, in addition to that, incredible and incredibly high level of interest. It was really now or never that uh, you couldn't keep postponing um, this process that uh, the plunge needed to be taken. Uh, I recall the day of the referendum itself as being reasonably quiet and orderly, um, of driving around and seeing long uh, lines of people from early in the morning uh, lining up to vote. Um, uh, but really the, 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 the trouble breaking out um, uh, a few days after the, the vote and particularly after the result was announced um, I remember going to the, uh, the UN compound uh, several days into this violence and really being shocked. It, it had become a, a place of refuge for many Timorese, so there were hundreds if not thousands of people inside this compound. Uh, and it really, to me, it looked like a refugee camp. We weren't on the ground when Interfed arrived. We, we returned to Dili a week or so after Inter Interfet arrived in the country uh, and went back and uh, um, took possession of, the, uh, of our office of the Australian mission again. We obviously made contact with Interfet uh, very quickly. Peter Cosgrove was very welcoming. One of the most popular places to eat uh, was a restaurant that had been set up uh, amongst the ruins of a burnt down house. So it was, the restaurant was called The Burnt House set up by some enterprising Timorese uh, and uh, it was kind of emblematic. Uh, so you sat amongst, um, I don't think there was a roof um, in most of the place from memory uh, and all the scorch and burn marks were still completely visible up the walls um, and so, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was very much what Dilly was like. Uh, look, my, my sense is that it's going to be a pretty dynamic relationship. What makes it interesting, I think it's not, it's not a one-way relationship and it never has been. Uh, the Timorese leadership, um, both the, 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 the independence generation and also the younger generation have got really uh, clear ideas about where they want to take the country. Uh, about the importance of uh, national sovereignty. There will be a commitment on both sides, given that we are neighbouring countries, to, to make things work, to have a good productive relationship. There are, you know, one of the things that uh, was always evident throughout the time that I was uh, in, uh, in Dili was the level of people-to-people -people links between uh, Australia and, uh, and Timor. Uh, and that had been built over many years. Um, my message is um, congratulations, uh, 20 years after the, um, after the popular consultation. Um, it's, uh, you know, when we set up the Australian uh, consulate, the, the Australian mission in July 1999, we didn't know where all this was going to go. We were just getting on with the job and every day was very different. Um, very challenging. The experiences are, are ones that you would never forget uh, right through your life. I think they will always have a friend in Australia. <laughs>